everybody welcome to my Subaru once again for Miller Time Devotions and if you're following on Sundays at all I have been doing a series in the Lord's Prayer uh, we're taking it line by line just really digging deep into what each part of that prayer means and, and we've said that it's not a prayer that's to be just memorized and quoted uh, when you take time to really think about each phrase of this prayer, man, it just takes you to a new place in your relationship with God. In fact, if you sometimes struggle with how to pray or what to pray about, man, I recommend just taking the Lord's Prayer as uh, kind of a scaffolding to, to kind of just prop up your own prayer life. Um, so, for example, you could start off with the, the very first part, Our Father who is in heaven, and just where does that take your mind? Where does that take your imagination? Uh, what, what does it mean to approach God as a Father, a heavenly Father, a Father who is a good Father, a Father who loves you and who, more than you realize, longs to give you good things? And then you take a, a few minutes and you just think about the next line, hallowed be your name. How do I live in that balance? How do I live in that tension between a good, loving, intimate father and a God who is holy and righteous and whose name is to be deeply revered and respected, hallowed? And then you spend some time thinking, before you ask for anything, you spend some time thinking about that next phrase, your kingdom come. Your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. And personalize it. Your kingdom come, your will be done in my life as it is in heaven. And so now you've laid a foundation of who God is and who you are in relation to God and who God is for you. And then he invites you to ask. You know, I have a... A book that I got not too long ago and it's called the mystic prayers it's it's prayers that are not uh, mystic in the sense that we think of magical but they are uh, prayers that have been penned by Christians from all branches of the Christian faith Orthodox Catholic Protestant uh, evangelical charismatic and some of these prayers go back hundreds of years and while I believe Jesus is teaching us to, to pray from our own hearts, to keep it real, to keep it simple, and the most effective prayer is just your heart connecting to the heart of God. But sometimes when you read these prayers from these ancients who learned so much about walking with Jesus, who learned so much about what it meant to, to become like Christ in their journey of faith, sometimes the words they use just connect with my heart. It, it, it puts words to what I'm already feeling, just much better than I'm able to put it in words. This morning I read a prayer by a guy named John Henry Newman. Uh, he lived between 1801 and 1890. He's an English theologian and a poet. Listen to the prayer I read just this morning, uh, the day I recorded this message. And just in terms of context, on Sunday, I just spoke about how we need to surrender to God's will. Um, we need to soften our heart to His will. And that is a big part of, of our journey with God. And this is what his prayer said. May all I do today begin with you, O Lord. Plant dreams and hopes within my soul. Receive my tired spirit. Be with me today. May all I do today continue with your help, O Lord. Be at my side and walk with me. Be my support today. May all I do today reach far and wide, O Lord. My thoughts, my work, my life. Make them blessings for your kingdom. Let them go beyond today. O oh God, today is new, unlike any other day. For God makes each day different. 
Today, God's everyday grace falls on my soul like abundant seed, though I may hardly see it. Let those words, let that prayer be your prayer today. And may the peace of God that passes all understanding guard your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus. God bless you all, and I'll see you next time. Thank you.